I hope I'm on music now. Great. So I want to talk about uh, work in progress um, with uh, Andres Samuel Fuentes on counting curves over an arbitrary field using topical geometry. So the plan is for the first two thirds of the talk, I want to talk about counting curves over arbitrary fields. What I mean by this, and then the last third, I hope we get to how to use topical geometry to do that. So let's start with uh, counting. What I want to count today is just, I'll, I'll restrict to the, the case of saying rational curves. And for this, I want uh, ND to be the number of plane rational degree D uh, curves through given uh, 3D minus one given. Let's do a very easy example. It's not very easy. When D is equal to one, then 3D minus one is, is two. So we want degree one curve. So lines with two given points, and there's only one. So N1 is one. When D is equal to two, then we want to count uh, conics through five points. And you've probably seen this before that a conic is determined by five points. You can do this both in but then not. So there's only one. So n2 is one. But in degree three, this is not one. Um, this is actually 12. So I want you to view these counts now, and I'll I'll just go to the high degree, but I want you to view these counts to be counts over an algebraic proposed field, and then we can always find the kind of curve we find over the field app uh, you started with. But that, let's go to another field, um, which is not algebraic proposed, but let's go to the real numbers because this is already a real note that uh, well known. So um, the question is uh, when all points are real, I'll restrict to in this case today, how many of the curves are real? And uh, I'm going to use different color, but in this case, um, this number here is still one. The two points are real, there's one real line. This number is still one, but this number is not, it depends on the choice of points. It could be so over R, this is uh, the number of real curves curves could be eight, 10, and 12. And this depends on configuration of points. But I want to tell you today how to still get an invariant count. Um, so this doesn't depend on the configuration of points, and this works in the following way. This was observed by uh, Nation Z. Um, and when Nation Z observed that uh, one can count real curves with, with a plus or minus one, and this depends on the on the on the types of nodes. So degree three curves will have one node. Degree uh, three rational uh, curves will have one node, and this could either look like this, or it could be uh, something like this. And these two branches are defined over the uh, over the complex. Let me write this down. Um, so there are two types of nodes defined over R. Um, so real nodes. The first type is what I want to call split node. That's uh, this one here. So locally, it looks just like this, and it's given by the equation x squared minus y squared is equal to zero. It's split which has two factors x minus y and x plus y, or the solitary node. And this is given by x squared plus 
y squared is equal to zero. So it has one real point at zero here, the node, but the branches are lived over the complex numbers and are complex numbers. And Vishnu's uh, observation was that, well, instead of counting this real curve, we don't then we don't get anything invariant. But if we assign a plus or minus one and sum up all these plus or minus one, we get something invariant. I mean, in the following way. Um, first, I want to define the type of a node, a real node. It's either plus one or minus one. Um, plus one in the split case and minus one in the solitary case. And uh, the version G sign is the following. So um, we take a curve C, take the product over all the real nodes. The ones that actually have residue field, uh, the real numbers, and then have to follow it. V over the type. The fit node won't contribute anything to this uh, product, so this is just minus one to the number of colors. And then, uh, Rachel G showed that. On the WD, where you take the sum over all of the relation she's um, fine. Um, of uh, the sum goes over C a real for perfect kind of real numbers, rational, plane, degree, D curve through given. Uh, 3D minus one real point given, but this is actually independent of the choice. You just pick one generic point configuration, and the theorem says that this is is uh, independent of the choice. So, if we go back here. Here, this, this one is just W1, this W, this one is just, uh, this one is just W2. And now the very, very interesting question here is what is W3? And uh, this turns out to be eight. We will also see this. Here. So um, there could either be just uh, eight real curves. They all have a split node. There could be 10 real curves, nine of which have a split node and one have a solitary node, or there are 12 real curves that can, that can have a split node and the other one has, a, the other two have a solitary node. The three split curves will always only have one. And now um, the, the pictures are for later. Um, Before I get to the pictures, I now want to ask the question, what to do over other? Question, what? Uh, and I want to start with a very, very naive approach, and I'll tell you later why. So observation. And now you don't know where to come from, but this is really random. If I take the units of the complex number, so C without uh, zero, and I take this as a set, and I mod out by units squared, that means this is the set of units where where I have an equivalent relation, and I say that two, two complex numbers are equivalent if they differ by a square. Well, this doesn't really make much sense here, because uh, any two complex numbers uh, as, like differ by a square. So this is just, this is just one element and let me call it, just let's just uh, pick one. 
here it's a little more interesting. Um, so I want to look at this this set of the equivalent facets, and uh, here minus one doesn't have a square root. So, for example, one and minus one are not in the same equivalent path. However, there are only two equivalent facets, which otherwise I have square root. So there are two elements, plus and minus one. And now uh, the observation is well in the first case. Um, where I just didn't care about the field or it just counted over an algebraic result field, I counted everything. And when this is algebraic result, it's always just one element. So uh, I counted everything with a one. But in the real case, I counted the curves with either plus or minus. So the naive idea is found curves with the weight. And the weight should live in units of the field, not units squared. And what should this weight be? Well, let's, let's do this very naively. Here in the real case, I looked at the, the types of nodes. So let's look at what kind of, what types of um, nodes over K they are. So I claim that we still have like a, a flip node and I want to give the, the, so the, the picture. I want to say that the equation is I can choose of the form x squared minus let's say alpha y squared, but now alpha lives is a square in the unit of k. I can change this equation to, to this equation by just replacing y by alpha, alpha y. But I want to write it like this to actually match this with a different class. Or we could have a, a qualitary node. But there we could have different types. Now I also want to write this equation, the same equation, but now alpha is not squared. And here we have a different type for each class in, in here, which is not the square, because I can't do a coordinate change in, in identity. So there might be more types. And this uh, this alpha just really detects where these these conjugate, these GABA conjugate branch. So um, earlier I defined the type of a node to be plus or minus one, and this, this observe that this actually this plus or minus one is it's just the alpha. In the first case, alpha is one, and here we have minus one. So the naive idea now would be to define the type of a node, of a k node, to be the class of alpha. And so this matches actually, this, this matches the real case. And remember the class of alpha that we generate. And what should the, the, the K version of this version G weight, the version G sign be um, of the C. So it should somehow be the product over all the nodes. Um, of these types. Um, well, there might not be any nodes defined over over k. So what we actually want to do here is, I want to take the norm, the field norm of the residue field, k of the residue field of uh, of z over k, and then I take into account all the nodes that. Um, if it's not defined over k, we just you pass, go to the residue field and then we take the norm and we land in, in k. Uh, but this really generalizes uh, what I did here. Um, why is that? Well, assume that um, for, for a real curve, there could be nodes defined over, over the complex numbers. We would have a complex conjugate pair. And then the norm of this would be something positive. So 
we just forget about it. So this is naturally generalized this, and I claim that this actually works. Uh, so, um, so this actually works, and the input comes from a one homotopy theory, and I will say a little bit about this, but maybe I should stop here and ask if there are any questions. You have some time to think about it while I erase it. That was the motivation. And now it gets a little technical. And then maybe later when I get to the topic and stuff, we'll get a bit more familiar. So I now want to argue that this naive approach actually works in the following way. Yeah. Well, like the nor an orbit of nodes, uh, this will be one um, one K point. You can either view this as one k point, and then each, each node is, uh, has resolution with k, and then it's an orbit. And you could either view this as the product of the type of this, and you, you do the correct uh, product, namely the Galois conjugate, or you just take the norm of this big point, whatever you prefer. Um, so I want to argue that this uh, naive idea actually works, and the input comes from a one homotopy theory, and I won't. Tell you much about this, just what it rests for the idea. So, what should this be? This is homotopy theory uh, on two varieties, k varieties. Okay, so some field to start with. And we want to do homotopy theory on two k varieties. And this actually works, this was developed by Novell and Borbotsky. But I, I will spare you the technical We will need um, one particular thing from here. So uh, this, this tells me that everything I know from homotopy theory, I can do also with smooth paper edits. That's kind of what I want to use. And now I want to tell you what I want to use from, um, from classical homotopy theory. So let's go back to classical homotopy theory. Um, let's assume you have a map x f x to y, uh, and I want this to be very nice manifold. Okay, I have written down some words connected, close, so compact without boundary, uh, oriented. That's important. And money. Because then what I can do is I can look at f lower star from the end uh, homology of it. And because I, uh, I'm i in the oriented case, um, I, uh, this is isomorphic to Z, and this is isomorphic to Z. And here, this is the difference in the first Then we call that I derived a uh, topology class that one here is sent to what is called the degree of F. So this is Z. And also, to call one more thing, which I won't go into in detail, this actually can be written as the sum of local degrees. Where you sum up over all x in the pre image of some point y. Take a point here, you look at all the points of the pre image, um, and hopefully there are finitely many, the assumption to restore this, um, and you take uh, something that, which is called the local degree, which is what you do, 
you take a, in, in your pre-image, you take a very small ball around it. So you only have this one point in there. If you left the point boundary, you get Sn. It's the same you do in the image. So you get the map from Sn to Sn. So you take and take the degree again. So this is the local distance. Maybe it's too familiar to you. Otherwise, you can write it as the sum of local degrees. So, and now let me just tell you that there's a version for this in this A1 homotopy set here. In A1 homotopy theory, and we have something I want to call the A1 degree. So, this will quickly be analog of this. Um, so, for a map, now F x to y, now x and y should be uh, move proper, let's still say n dimensional k variety. Um, and we also need some orientation assumption. And uh, I also wrote uh, connected here. So let's also assume that they are something similar to connected or the A1 version of A1. Um, using the wise um, And then what one can do is one can also assign a degree, call it A1 degree set. And this should really just be the analog of this, but I'm not telling you how it works, but I tell you where it lives. And this one here is not an integer. Um, but it lives in something called uh, the growth and wittering of the field thing. And it turns out, what I will tell you next, that the elements in here look very similar to, to, to this. So let me tell you why. So what is this growth in the bit string of, of K? The, of the GW of K? Not from a certain distance, growth in the bit. Sorry about that. You can define this as the, the group completion of uh, um, the set of isometric classes of non degenerate sporadic ones. For this, I might want like here to not have a character, which we will see later. Um, with respect to Taking the dark. So this is very technical, so let me elaborate. Okay, so you take the 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 um uh let's take the set of isometric classes of non-degenerate quadratic forms. So there we have quadratic forms, and you can take two quadratic forms over k. Uh, and you can take the direct sum, and you get a new quadratic form. So you have a monoid structure on this, and then you group the two. So you just make this into the, the group, the very natural. Um, this uh, is, uh, is actually a ring. It becomes a ring with taking the tensor product. Um, but okay, this is maybe not so easy to compute with. So. Um, let me tell you a different representation of it. Namely, I claim that the W of K is generated by classes bracket A, where A is a unit mod unit squared. And hey, this is something familiar. That's something we call it. Exactly the classes we're looking for. So sticking these brackets around A just actually remembers the class and units not being expressed. Uh, why is that? 
this should be the class which is quadratic form A x squared. And here it also really makes sense. Um, this is the same as the class of A b squared x squared because it was before the change and put the b into the, the coordinate, and then the path is really good. So these are the generators. That's that's really great. That's exactly what we want. Um, and we have these respect a couple of relations. I'll just write them out. We won't use them again, but relation. So we have A plus B the same as A plus B plus A, B, A plus B, and A times B the same as A, B. And this is for a, B shouldn't be zero. In the first case, A plus B should, shouldn't be zero. Maybe one thing I will need to is then whenever we have a finite set of field extension, I can define uh, a map from BW of L to the W of K, which takes the paradic form now I use the the first definition again, so that this can be quadratic form, and this I can just tend to, uh, or this should be quadratic form of L, sorry, L, and then compose it with a field trace. And so this is a field trace. So we also denote this map by this. And I will need this in a second. Um, and then when I say the theorem about the invariance, but maybe let's do some examples first. Rosendick rendering of C. Um, we've already seen that this set here, this is just one element, it has one generator, so this is the integer. The Rosendick rendering of R. We've already seen that the set of generators here uh, consists of two elements, and this turns out to be the polynomial ring and obviously in the cyclic group of order two. Let's also do a finite field. Then, at least as, as group, it brings it to the more complicated. Uh, this is Z plus unit mod unit squared. Or this I could also identify this unit. And now, um, ah, this is still here. Let's define this, this weight. And I put an A1 here because it comes from A1 homotopy theory to really be what I wrote here, but just stick it to track track. So this is pretty much the same thing. I just remember everything up to here. Now this is. I stick graphic brackets around it and say it's an element of the growth in the quit string. And now we want some kind of invariant statement that if they count curves um, uh, with this, this weight uh, through a given configuration of points, then this should be independent of the, the choice of points. And that's what I write, we'll write uh, next. And the reason for this will be that um, this, this count is actually equal to a degree. And these contributions are actually, uh, these are actually these local degrees. But let me write this down. Um, Uh, so this is Jeffrey Cuff, Mark Levine, Greg Solomon, and uh, here's Vicogren. 
this came out. Uh, at least you can find it on this, this is his, um, homepage. Um, you make the assumption that the characteristic K is equal to three, and then let's define an NDA1 to be the following. I take the sum over all curves um, of these equates. Let's see. But now I actually want to take into account um, all the curves. So I take these traces I, I defined here, yeah, right? Trace and here that K of C with a few of definitions of where this curve is defined for K, so I trace down. To think about this again as taking the sum of scalar conjugate like this. And here the sum, so this lives in W of K. And here the sum over runs over all plane rational uh, degree D curves to a given configuration of uh, 3D minus one points to find that in this case points to find over eight. You can also make it more complicated, but for, for, for today it's just all points uh, defined over K. And the theorem is that this one is independent of the choice of point. And the reason for this is, I can now say even case, or give you an idea why this is true, this NDA1 is actually this A1 degree, which I have of the following map. Take the evaluation map of the modularized space of P0, 3D minus one mark uh, stable map to P2 of the UD, and we evaluate to the power of one. There's, they show there's a well defined by one degree, and just like the A1 degree, it splits up as the sum of local degrees, local A1 degrees. So the left hand side doesn't depend on your point configuration, but the sum of local A1 degrees, again, is to take a configuration of points as it's in here. And you look at the pre image, and for each of the points of the pre images, which will be curves, right, for stable maps, you can, uh, you can find this uh, local A1 degree. And this one here turns out to be, be this one. So, um, this is all I wanted to say about this NDA1 for this count of curves in arbitrary field. And now the big question I want to answer in the last uh, 12 minutes is how to count this. And for this, I want to use uh, topical geometry, a correspondence theorem. So first I want to stop and ask. Yeah. Yeah. No, the way it's different. You're right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, when you have a, it turns out that when you do this here uh, and you have a, this is the complex of the this is the complex of the real number, um, then this will be, this will give, for each of these, it will give me a one plus minus one. So if you, and then when you do this over the real numbers, you forget the bracket and this just adds up to zero. So these don't tell you what you want. Ah, yeah, right. You can also take double orbits, and then this will still be invariant. Yeah, when you take it, like you take a k point in here, which will be something. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same statement. But today, I only want to look at this case. I have to figure out the other. Yeah. Um, so I, I've seen earlier in, in Julia's talk there was also some. Some tropical geometry. Uh, I looked at the abstract and I, I assume that you have at least seen tropical curves before because I don't have time to define them, but I drew some examples for you. So we want to uh, look at the count. Um, we want to compute this uh, NDA1 now. 
Um, and one way to do this is actually translate this question to the tropical work. Uh, where to each of these, to each uh, plane rational curve, or to each curve, uh, plane curve, I can uh, associate the tropical curve. This will be a graph that looks like this. And then uh, now, um, uh, and we can identify this pound with a pound of tropical curves, namely as follows. Uh, so let gamma graph be a simple, now we'll just call it this in a second, tropical curve. So as I said, um, it will be, be a graph like this. So this is the weighted graphs. Or the, so each edge has a weight and weight once I don't write. So the only non trivial weight here is the two. Um, and uh, simple means that the, the weights of all these unbounded edges here is one, as in all of these examples. And uh, also it means that we only have three valent and four valent vertices. So here we have two valent vertices and one four valent vertex and all of these other vertices. And for these, one can define complex and real multiplicity, namely as follows. Uh, the complex one is to take the product over all the, um, let's say, triangles in the rule subdivision, which I have uh, and you take the double Euclidean area. I never know how to do this. Um, so for for this curve, I've drawn the subdivision here. So this is a, uh, a lattice polygon. So this is a subset of R2. So I, I, um, in R2, we have a lattice. I drew the lattice point in here. So this is the point zero zero. This is the point three zero. This is the point zero three. And uh, I, I subdivide this in the following way to each of the edges, I draw an orthogonal edge. So to this, I can draw this orthogonal edge. To this, I draw this orthogonal edge. To this edge, I draw this orthogonal edge. So the edges correspond to the edges here. And the vertices correspond to this, this vertex here corresponds to this triangle. And this four valent vertex corresponds to this one and that one. And I want to take the product over all the triangles. So we have a lot of triangles in here of the double Euclidean area here. So let's do these, these examples. So here this multiplicity is take the product of all the, the areas here. So the area is a half of so the double area is one and the same for here multiplicity is one. Here um this these triangles have all area a half. Except these two, these have area one, so double area two, so the multiplicity is four. And here, the multiplicity is these have all area one, and this has area. And there's also a real multiplicity of this. Um, what was that? Which squares? And this one, we just ignore them. They just we don't we don't care about them. Yeah, this is just we don't we really only care about the triangle. Also for the for the real space. Um, here we take either the product of minus one, here again, the product over all the triangle of minus one to the number of interior lattice points. Let me write in of delta, um, the triangle, triangle, so this is interior lattice point. Um, in case all edges, have odd weights, 
so all edges of the, the curve here have odd weights, or alternatively, all of these lengths here are odd, or let's say are odd. So you see that here, this, this, this two corresponds to, to an edge here, which has length P. Um, and all of these are odd, and otherwise it's, it's zero. So to the example. So here, all the edges have weight one. So we're in the first case. So we look at all the triangles and we look for interior points, but there are none. So it's minus one to the zero, so it's one. Here, the real multiplicity. Turns out we are in the second case because we have this weight two edge. So here the multiplicity is zero. And here the multiplicity, that's why I multiplicity this example. Here we have one, one uh, interior point, that point in one of the triangles. That's mine. And uh, McCulkin's correspondence theorem, and now by now there are many, many more correspondence theorems uh, which generalize this. And uh, but I don't want to start mentioning names because I will forget half of them. But McCulkin is the first. Um, says the following, namely that this N D from the beginning is the same as N D trop, where N D trop is the sum over all tropical curves for a given configuration of points which accounted with these complex multiplicities. Um, and W, the spectrum big count, is the same as uh, W, the trop, where we take the same sum with real multiplicities. And I'll write down where the sum runs over sum over um, rational, you can also define the rational topical curves are uh, um, rational topical curves to uh, generic configuration of 3D minus one points in R2, in R2. So you take uh, some generic enough in R2 and you count all of these kinds of graphs, which are not completely arbitrary. They have to follow some rules to, to these, not these points. Generic will tell you that it's actually simple. Um, and, and we can identify the counts we wanted to compute with these topic accounts. But the upshot here is that finding all of these curves can be done with simple combinatorics. So this is really nice. And the last two minutes, I want to say that, uh, talk about my work in progress where we show a correspondence theorem, but, but with it. So first I need to define an A1 multiplicity for the tropical curve. And I want this, I define this to be, and this I'll be part of the proof to be, I take the real multiplicity and stick it into bracket plus the complex multiplicity minus one divided by two times uh, H and H is one plus minus one. And this is in the first case that we only have um, odd uh, weight edges. And otherwise I take the complex multiplicity, I divide it by two and also multiply H out. This is uh, really, really surprising. There's only once this is either one and one and minus one, and these are one to minus one. So this is only sums of one to minus one. So this is really surprising, uh, or this is really not obvious because here there could be anything, maybe not anything, but there could be other classes when we're not in R over R recipe. And then our quadratic 
I call this quadratic correspondence here because it's quadratic form. Says that this one here I can compute as a tropical count, namely as MD A1 trop. And here I just do uh, this is equal to this, and this is defined to be the same sum as here over now all the A1 multiplicity. So this is the same sum as above from the right. And to give me one more minute. Uh, I already said that um, you can see that these multiplicities are completely determined by the real and the complex multiplicity. So as a corollary, I don't need to find a new combinatorial formula for this. I can just express it in terms of the uh, real and the complex count and um, we get the following NDA1 equals ND minus WD divided by two and H plus WD times one. So this is just to do what you need to if you stare at it and then you figure out that this is the formula for it. And these are known. So if you let's do the first four cases where D is one, two, three, or four, and here we have N D, here W D and here N D A one. Then this was one, uh, this was one, and this was just bracket one. This was also one, this was one, this was bracket one. Here was more interesting. Here, remember we had the 12, here the eight, and here we have eight times one, plus two times H. And the last one I have to pick up at 620, 380, and the 240 plus one, plus the difference divided by two, which is 190 H. And let me stop here. <laughs> I think there, there are also uh, recursions for the real count. They should also be recursions. Uh, I, I just didn't. I, I know. I, mean, I was happy when I realized. This. <laughs> but yeah, there should be. Yeah, there are recursions also for the real count. Okay. Yeah, I mean, then you could just interpolate it like this with recursion. Yeah, yeah, it gets, yeah. So, and actually when you have a uh, Gawa orbit, we looked at that the next work of those, where we actually looked at the simplest case where you have like two, uh, a few different extension of degree two, and then you have uh, uh, um, two conjugate points there. And then you not only get one one minus one, you get like you join a square root of D, you get the Ds in here. Yeah, then it's, uh, yeah, this is also we really to get the Uh uh no I don't think. But it's yeah, we don't care. This, this one here, this one, um, or this is like really hard. This is like, this is the, in, the, the correspondence theorem is actually not this, but it's to come up what, what should this be. And this is really, you have several curves that tropicalize to the same tropical curve. And the correspondence theorem works like this. You have a tropical tropical curve and you construct all the algebraic curves that, that tropicalize this. And then you compute then I compute this of this, which is really, uh, we compute this thing of this, it's really hard. And then 
magically this comes out, but this was it's like a many page preparation. You have more questions? Um, so it, there are no restrictions on the field K now that- Oh, I forgot. Thank you. Ah. I, well, so, so for, yeah, thank you. I want the characteristic of K to be bigger of the, than the degree. Um, so, so for, first of all, we only have separable field extension because otherwise it, all the traces not even make sense and also, like with the degree, if the characteristic is bigger than the degree, so the equations are nice. So, so in the computation, you know, like a lot of things can be wrong. But it, with these con, uh, constraints? Or, or characteristic. I guess only But okay, so with, but with this constraints, you're saying the uh, ND formula, yeah. Actually, doesn't have any of the interesting uh, classes from the Gretton grid string. And Just if you have K points, if you have a interest, if you have like a, um, points that come in the Gala orbit, then you have more interesting. Points. But then the combinatorics get also very, very complicated. It seems very complicated. Okay. We're, we're working on the simplest case where we have secret keys. 